It's the last week of our series, Stretch. In the last few weeks, we've stretched our bodies, stretched our brains, and hopefully stretched our faith too. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about how you can grow and strengthen your faith by stretching it just like you would a muscle. Let's recap. You can stretch your faith by making a commitment to grow, starting a new habit that will help your faith grow, letting go of an old habit that is keeping you from growing. Today is all about failure. A couple weeks ago, I asked you what some of your epic fails were. Here were some of your responses. <laughs> no! No! Hi, my worst fail is about two years ago when I had my dance recital and we switched the placement of where we were in the direction of some of our moves very last minute, like the night of the show, like only a couple hours beforehand. And I remembered, but the person next to me didn't. So instead of doing a cartwheel to the right, we switched it to going to the left, but she still was going to the right. So when she did that, she kicked me in the head no. and I fell down on stage and rolled off for a second and then rolled back on because I realized I had to keep going, but it hurt so bad. So that's my worst fail. When we decide to grow our muscles, physically or spiritually, we all start with big commitments and great intentions. But here's the truth. At some point, you will experience setbacks. The commitment you made will feel less exciting, interesting, or urgent than it did at the beginning. Maybe you'll forget to practice the new habit you started, or maybe you'll once again grab onto that old habit that you tried to give up. Someday and someday soon, you're going to fail. And when you fail, what will you do next? There are so many reasons we might fail in our faith. Maybe at some point you've committed to reading the Bible every day, but you don't anymore. Maybe you made it a habit to pray consistently, but you've realized it's been months since you last talked to God. Or maybe you decided to love others like God loves you until you snapped at someone who got under your skin. I can relate. When we fail, we often feel defeated, ashamed, and hopeless. We sometimes even give up. Today, I wanna to challenge you to think about failure differently. What if failure isn't something to fear or be ashamed of? What if failure can actually help our faith grow? What if failure is just part of the stretch? Some of the greatest heroes in the Bible were people who some might consider failures, epic failures. Moses was chosen to lead God's people, but was terrible at public speaking, and he once killed a guy. Sarah was told by God that she would be a mother at an old age, but she laughed in God's face and took matters into her own hands. God made David king of Israel, but David used his power to take advantage of a woman and had her husband killed. And one of Jesus' closest disciples, Peter, denied having even known Jesus, and he cut off a guy's ear with a sword. All of these great biblical heroes failed, but their failures weren't the end of their stories. Even when they failed, they let their faith be stretched. Moses' faith was stretched when he saw that God could use him despite his past mistakes and present fears. Sarah's faith was stretched when she discovered that God not only forgave her for her doubts and disobedience, but still gave her what was promised to her. David's faith was stretched when God allowed him to experience both grace and justice for the wrongs he committed. Peter's faith was stretched when Jesus not only forgave him for denying him, but then promised to make Peter a great leader in the history of God's church. All of these people were failures, but their failures weren't the end of their stories. For these followers of God, failure was just another stretch that helped them develop a stronger faith. 
Paul, one of the most influential leaders in the history of the church, also understood failure well. In Romans 7, 15 through 25, he says, I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. I know perfectly well that what I'm doing is wrong and my bad conscience shows that I agree that the law is good, but I can't help myself because it is sin inside me that makes me do these evil things. I know I am rotten through and through so far as my old sinful nature is concerned. No matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. I want to, but I can't. When I want to do good, I don't. And when I try not to do wrong, I do it anyway. But if I'm doing what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing it. The sin within me is doing it. It seems to be a fact of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another law at work within me that is at war with my mind. This law wins the fight and makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Now, those are some relatable verses in the Bible. How many of you have ever said things like that? I know I have. I get so frustrated with myself when my heart a heart that loves God does exactly the opposite of what I desire. Even Paul, the great church leader and someone that some might call a super Christian, said he struggled. He didn't understand why he did what he did. He wanted to do the right thing, but couldn't seem to do it. He often did things he hated and couldn't stop. He was always at war between good and evil. He sometimes felt hopeless, but trusted that God would always rescue him. When I read Paul's words, I see that the two reasons he often failed are the same two reasons you and I often fail. We fail to stop. We try to stop doing what we know we shouldn't do, but keep failing. And we fail to start. We try to start doing things we know we should do, but keep failing at that too. In another letter, Paul spoke about a specific area of his life that caused him to struggle. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse seven through 10, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Not only did Paul fail when it came to sin, but there were also times when Paul felt overwhelmed, weak, and powerless. But rather than being frustrated or angry about his weaknesses, Paul found a way to delight or find pleasure in those weaknesses. How? All right, listen up. If you've checked out, check back in because this is important. Paul understood that his failures and struggles weren't liabilities. He understood that his weaknesses could actually bring him closer to Jesus. When Paul looked at his weaknesses, he saw opportunities for his faith to stretch and grow stronger. He recognized that when he was weak, God was strong in him. Here's what you need to understand. When you are weak, that's when God steps in nearer. That's when God takes over and shows his power in your weakness, but you have to allow him to. When we're feeling weak, this is when we ask God to step up and help us, and he will. But unfortunately, we can also push him aside and not allow him to work in us when we're struggling. The good thing about our weaknesses is that they show us areas in which we can grow. We can actually access power when we realize that our weaknesses are an opportunity for God's power to grow us and for us to show God's glory. It's an opportunity for us to point and say, but look at God, He is sovereign and faithful in spite of my weaknesses and failures. Yes, we should pay attention to our weaknesses so that we're aware of them, but we don't wallow in them or give up when we mess up. We allow God to help us change and grow. 
You might be excited now about stretching your faith and growing closer to Jesus, but at some point you will feel like a failure. You will make mistakes. You will doubt. You will ask questions. You will lose passion and focus. When you do, remember that God isn't surprised by your failure. Your failure is just part of the stretch. Failure will happen, but failure doesn't have to be the end of your story. When you fail, and you will, you have two choices. You can let shame, frustrations, and hopelessness prevent you from trying again, or you can let God use your failure to stretch you and make your faith grow stronger. Next time you fail, whether it's next week or in the next five minutes, I hope you choose to keep moving forward and to keep stretching through your failures because you can stretch your faith even when you fail. Here's some encouraging news for you today. Even if you're trying to stretch your faith, you're doing it right. God doesn't expect you to get it 100% right. He knows we need Him. In our weakness, He is full of love, compassion, and grace. If you're thinking to yourself, I hear you and I want to believe this, but I'm still afraid of stretching and failing. Let me give you a few helpful tips. Before you fail, get a community. Do it now before you're stumbling. Surround yourself with people who want to see you succeed and be the kind of person who helps others through their failures. Ask someone to hold you accountable. Reach out for help from others when it's hard to keep moving. Don't be afraid to be honest and vulnerable. It's the best way to get the help you need. Sometimes this looks like people your own age, but sometimes this looks like other adults in your church community who love you and want what's best for you. When you fail, fall on Jesus. Paul knew that only Jesus could rescue him from himself, and the same is true for you and me. When you fail, fall on Jesus. He won't be angry or disappointed or even surprised. He's God. He knows exactly who you are and how you struggle, and He loves you anyway. When you fail, get back up. Don't let failure or the fear of failure paralyze you. There is more to your story than your latest or greatest failure. If the people we talked about today teach us anything, it's that God is always ready to forgive and use us despite our failures. Every week of this series, you've had an opportunity to make a commitment to stretch your faith in a new way. You may have been nervous to share your commitments initially, but today we want to give you the chance to share your commitments with one another in your small group, to actually say them out loud and ask your community to help you stay committed. Over the last few weeks, you may have committed to show up. If you're here, you did it. Share with your group what you've learned these last few weeks and how you're going to put what you've learned into practice. Follow Jesus. If you decided to follow Jesus for the first time, we are thrilled for you. We wanna celebrate with you and help you take next steps in your walk with Jesus. Love God. If you made a commitment to spend more time with God, share it. We can help each other keep our commitments when it gets difficult. Love others. If you made a commitment to love others well, share that too. We're going to need each other to keep us accountable. Ask questions. If you're not sure what you think about following Jesus, that's okay. I hope you've been asking questions and I hope you'll continue to ask them. Keep searching for truth, don't stop. Share what you've decided to stretch with your small group. Be open and be honest. As we close the series, I hope you remember this. If you want your faith to grow and be strengthened, it doesn't happen overnight. It has to start somewhere though, and it can start today with a simple stretch. You can stretch your faith by making a commitment, or by starting something new, or by letting something go. And finally, as we learned today, you can stretch your faith even when you fail. <music>